Hi, this is Bill Raymond, and recently on the techgenics.com website, I wrote an article about how I am converting my app that's a VSTO, a Visual Studio Tools for Office add-in for Microsoft Word, and converting that to a web add-in. One of the things that's majorly different between the two is a VSTO app works with C Sharp, and a web add-in is really JavaScript focused. So I'm just going to show you the differences in this video. First, let me show you how to create a VSTO application, a Visual Studio Tools for Office application. So I'll go to File, um, I'm in Visual Studio 2017. This works in Visual Studio 2015 as well. Go to File, New, and choose Project. I'm going to choose VSTO add-ins, and I'm going to choose Microsoft Word and click OK. What Visual Studio is doing is creating a template for me. It's essentially building me the whole framework in order for me to build my application. Over here on the right hand side of the menu, uh, the screen rather, there's a properties area. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn on the Solution Explorer and you can see what's happened. It's created this word item here, and then there's the this addin.cs. So basically, I'm starting off with just a very simple uh, C-sharp project with not much else in there. If I were to start this application right now, what will happen is Microsoft Word will run and it will load up your add-in. But the add-in really isn't doing anything yet. You can see there's no tab here for your add-in. There's no icons in the ribbon bar. So how do we go ahead and do something unique with our add-in? Well, we're gonna exit Microsoft Word and come back here to Visual Studio. In order to add a toolbar, I need to go ahead and right click on my project, choose add new item. Then you can see here there's a ribbon visual designer. I'll go ahead and click add. What happens now is a designer comes up that allows me to add something to the toolbox. Right now it's pretty bland. It just says this has this little file thing here and it's showing me the tab that's going to get created and it's also showing a group. To add functionality to the tab, what we're gonna do is come over here to the toolbox and choose button. And I'll just drag this button over here onto group one. We're not trying to do anything special right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select this. Over on the right hand side in the properties, I'm going to change the control size to large so it's slightly larger. And I'll also just go ahead and change it to a sample button. And I'll also change the tab label to sample tab. You'll see I have some other uh, add-ins installed in Word in just a moment. So when I run this, what you'll see is my other custom application will be there as well, but we'll just come and run Word. Here's our sample tab. I click on that and you can see there's a the sample button. There's no actual icon on there such as there is here because I didn't select one, but the button is there now and I can add functionality to that button. Now let's exit Microsoft Word and go back into Visual Studio to see what we can do with this ribbon bar. This thing that we're going to do is take a look at the sample button. If I right click on this and choose view code, you'll see that I can go ahead and start writing some code in here to hook this button up to something. Now this button could do any number of things. It could save your document, open another document. It could insert a table, could actually do any number of things. It could read the document and save it to another format, save it to a PDF. You can do pretty much anything with a VSTO add-in. And you're not just limited to what you can do within, within Microsoft Word either. 
So in other words, if you, for example, needed to open some other file on a network drive that's not Microsoft Word and read that in and then stuff that into Microsoft Word, you can do all those types of things. What we're going to do is something very simple right now. And what I want to show you is that you can build a form. And this is going to be the big difference between VSTO and the web add-in. So let's go ahead, before we write any code here, I'm going to create a form. So I'll come over here to the Solution Explorer, and I'm going to add a new item, and I'm going to just choose a Windows form. Add that to my project. And I'll just expand this a little bit, and you can see it's your standard form. And it's real easy to change the form. So you can just say, say, hello world. And there the title of the form has changed. I can come over here to the toolbox and I can add a button. And I can change the text for that button. Then if I want to add some code here, I just double click and I can do some simple code. I'll just do um, whoop, message box dot show hello world. I'll do hello world from VSTO. There. So with this form done, I can go ahead and close this and save it. And now what I want to do is use that here in my code so that the new ribbon bar icon displays something. So I'll just go ahead and say var my form equal new form one. And then I'll say my form dot show. And now let's go ahead and run the app. Go back to the sample tab, click the sample button. You can see the form displayed with the button that I added and say it now. And there's my little message box. So that's a VSTO app. Obviously there's a lot more to it, but what I want you to understand here is that the VSTO app can pretty much do anything. And you have this nice form designer with, with C sharp and you can kind of do whatever you need to, but it only works in Microsoft Windows and it will only work with, I believe, I'm pretty sure that it only works with Microsoft Word and other off versions of Office 2013 and 2016. I believe that you can also create a 2010 uh, add-in, but primarily it's really designed for 2013, 2016, and Windows. What I'm going to do now is close down this entire solution. We're not going to use that anymore. And now I'm going to show you how a Word web add-in works. And it's pretty much the same for Excel, Word, Outlook. Each of them has their own specific requirements. But once again, I'm going to go to File, New, Project. And this time, I'm going to come over here to Add-ins on the left-hand side. And you can see there is a Microsoft Word web add-in. So I'll just go ahead and click OK to create that. Once your project's created, you're going to get a number of files over here in your project solution area. I'm going to walk you through some of these in just a minute. The first thing I'm going to point out is there's some errors and warnings that may show up. Don't worry about those right now. For purposes of this demonstration, there's no need to worry about those. Before I run the application, just to sort of, sort of show you what it looks like, there's a few things that I'm going to walk you through. First and foremost, this is a good tip. If you happen to be using Visual Studio 2015 or 2017, and when you run the app and it says, oh, it can't display it, or you know, there's an error reaching the server, contact the administrator, or something like that, Come to the project's uh, home here, the top of the project, and then locate the properties area. And down in the properties area, it will say SSL enabled. 
Right now it's set to true. Now what I found is in Visual Studio 2015, I always had to set that to false in order for it to work, uh, if, at least for development purposes. Of course, you're gonna have to deploy your web app at some point, and that's going to have to have SSL, uh, but right now you can leave it to false. I'm gonna put it back to true because I know that with this particular setup, it will run. Looking down at the project, you're gonna notice a few things. And more, most importantly is this home.css. And when we take a look at this, this is how we style our application. So in the original VSTO application demonstration I showed you, there was a form where I dropped a button onto it and then I resized it. I could have changed the color. I could have changed the font. Now what you'll do is you'll put the button in the HTML file and then you'll style it with the CSS file, setting the look and feel of the button. There's also a home.js file that is created. And by the way, you don't need to use any of these. You can create your own. These are the starter uh, files that Microsoft gives you. But in here is essentially where you're going to do your code. Now, if you recall from the VSTO application, there was just sort of a class1.cs file that was created. That allowed us to just type whatever code we wanted for our solution. Now we're going to use a JS file. That's a JavaScript file. So we are not writing in C-sharp at this point. If we want to create a Office web add-in, then we need to write our, our logic, at least the logic to interact with Microsoft Word as JavaScript. Now, before we continue any further, let's just take a look. I'm gonna run this program. Now, if you'll recall when we ran this program using the VSTO, nothing happened. There was no tab, there was no button. I had to create all of that. Here though, you'll see there is a show task pane and this little helper window here saying, you know, to get started, click this button. Before I click the button, notice here in Microsoft Word, it's a blank document. Now I'm gonna click the button. Once I click that button, it ran some code. A few things happened. One, it put some text here inside of the document. Two, it opened up the Office Web Add-in task pane here. And three, it styled and displayed the HTML file and hooked up all of the JavaScript. So what I'm looking at really right here for this add-in is nothing more than an HTML page that's been styled with the CSS file and has a button that's hooked up to some JavaScript. Also, the task pane was hooked up to some JavaScript. When I clicked that task pane, it automatically added some text here that says, this is sample text inserted into the document. So how does this sample application work? I'll just go ahead and double click on some text here and then click the highlight button in the task pane. And you can see it highlighted the text. I'll do that one more time. There. So you can see that what's happening here is a task pane can read and write information to and from the Microsoft Word document. You can create multiple of these HTML pages and you can create pretty much any kind of user interface that you want, although Microsoft does have some style guides that they prefer you follow. So now what I'm gonna show you is a little thing that I did earlier, which is I opened up the browser and open the HTML file. So this is just the HTML file that ships with the sample solution that Microsoft provides you when you create the Office Web add-in. I'm just gonna resize the browser here and you can see that there's some discrepancies between what's being displayed here and what's being displayed in the add-in. For example, we see sample, we see select some text, but then this whole description information, whoops, 
that you see here, that's not displayed, and the word highlight's not displayed, and so isn't the word Contoso. That's because Microsoft put some code inside of the solution using JavaScript, and that's what I'm going to walk you through next. I'll just go ahead and close down this Microsoft Word solution, and we'll get back into the project. When I'm in here, you can see I'm in the home.html file, and if I scroll down, you can see we're creating a button, and that button's called the highlight button. And there's a number of other spans associated with this button. So we've got, for example, the button text and the button description. Remember, in the browser, it doesn't display this. That's because that highlight, the word highlight isn't anywhere here inside the HTML. You have to go to the home.js file, and then you'll find that it's actually referencing the button text and putting the word highlight in it. And you'll also see here's where it adds the template description where it puts the descriptive information about the application. So really what you're doing here is you're creating the shell for your HTML file and then you're doing all of the code in this JavaScript file. So just be aware since it's JavaScript it does not have access to the operating system. Really what it has access to is the JavaScript libraries you have installed and, it, and you have access to the Microsoft Word object model. And that's about it. So I'm not going to walk through any more of this in this video other than to say that if you're looking to create a Windows-based application that needs to access the Windows operating system, then use VSTO, Visual Studio Tools for Office. If you want to create an application that will be in the Microsoft Office Store, and you can run on any version of Office and any operating system, then you are going to need to use a Office Web Add-in. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked what you just saw, please press the Like button below. It really does help. Thank you.